Okay, what up ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here, hopefully your favorite official content creator for the first Senate. And what I'm going to show you guys today is how to build up your bombing run Kyle. You guys have probably seen me use this build over and over over the past few days because it is so much fun to bomb Colossi. It is good, all right? But in order to build it, you are going to need to know how. So I'm going to teach you how to build up your Kyle, uh, what mods to put inside, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to talk about the secret garden, how it powers them up, all that kind of stuff. All right, so we're going to talk about all that. All right, but before we get into it, as always, I've got a quick sponsored ad for you, May. So if you like the gear, then see you in the gear. Enjoy the short sponsored ad. I'll be back in a moment. Hey there, everybody. I've just got one question for you guys. Do you like Hawaiian shirts? Because I've just partnered with you, May, in order to offer you guys 100% eco-friendly, premium Aloha-inspired apparel. There are literally hundreds of designs that you can choose from for men, women, kids, everything. I urge you guys to take a look at this website. And if you find something that you like, make sure to use code RAR10 at checkout. All right, link is in the description. Aloha, see you in the gear. Okay, what up? We're gonna be in the lab for this one. And welcome back, of course. We're gonna be in the lab for this one because um, I want to demonstrate a couple of things with Kyle that you guys may not know. So I'm gonna explain that to you guys in the lab because it's a lot easier than being in Albion. Then after that, of course, we will go and test this out against a Colossi because I'm sure many of you have not seen them. Well, have not seen this build on stream. Maybe some of y'all don't tune into stream. That's okay. Now, before we go on, if you haven't already registered me as your creator, please make sure to do so via the link in the first line of the description. If you registered me more than a month ago, please extend your support. If you have not refreshed your support, then Nexon just automatically removes you from the support list. So please make sure you do that monthly, all right? Okay, let's get into it. Now, when it comes to building Kyle, okay, and everything that you've seen me do on stream is with a purple reactor. I'm going to tell you that right now, purple reactor, okay? I don't even have a good gold reactor for him yet. That's how crazy this is. Let me remove my camera and let's talk about it. For your reactor, okay, what you want is, <laughs> excuse me, either tech or non-attribute skill power boost ratio. Some people like cooldown on it. I would say it's personally your choice. Um, I did not have one with cooldown. And of course you want a gold additional skill attack versus Colossus. I only have a purple, but this is still dishing out immense damage. Let that sink in for a minute. This reactor is all I had and I was still bringing the pain with Kyle. Once you get a gold reactor, it's even better, but these are the roles that I recommend. Of course, again, like I said, you can have additional skill attack versus Colossus and cooldown. You don't go for crits because Kyle does not crit, more or less. Okay, in terms of components, here is what you are going to use. For your external components, your HP auxiliary support power, you want a regular component. You do not need to use a set. All right, it needs a max HP of 646. Max HP role, you can have any other role that you want on your on your third roll, like you could have, because Kyle doesn't use MP recovery out of combat, he doesn't need it, right? So you can have any other roll that you want. If you want to put a resistance roll on it, that's fine. But max HP and max HP are crucial, all right? Because this is a overwhelming shield build. HP support sensor, same thing. Uh, max HP and then any two rolls that you like. HP recovery is okay only if you're going to use biosync shield. So for your support sensor, all that really matters is that it's a max HP roll. You could have anything on the rolls and it wouldn't even matter because you can have consumable drop rate, HP increase modifier, uh, descend and XP gain if you want to level up faster. The world's your oyster because there's there's no uh, shield recovery out of combat. Could potentially be a good one for this if you, if you really, really need it, but you're not out of combat that often. So I'll be real with you. You don't really need that, but you can, like I said, do anything you want with your sensor. I just so happen to have this sensor, so I just threw it on. For your memory, okay, all you really need is a max HP roll, so Annihilation Memory is a good choice, and then a Defense roll. The third roll can be anything. I happen to have one that has Firearm Proficiency Gain, and that's what I left on this thing. Um, MP Recovery Modifier is obviously not necessary. You can, There's also a Shield Increase, um, Shield Recovery in Combat. You might want that if you have a roll of that, but I don't. So yeah, just Defense and Shield Recovery in Combat would probably be the best bet. For your annihilation memory but again annihilation memory you've got to kill devourer over and over and over again so whether you have that or not i leave it up to you for your processor you need to use an annihilation processor why because the two set effect is quite important you want your skill duration increased by 
And for this one, the roles are important. Max shield and shield recovery modifier are crucial. All right. Without these, you will have a bad time. Okay, great. Now that you've got all this set up, these are my external components. Okay. With this build, I've got about 6,000 defense, 20,000 shields, more than enough for pretty much all the content in the game. Okay. Now let's get into weapons. When we talk about weapons, there's only one essential weapon for this. Now, of course, you should probably also have my Enduring Legacy here. But the most important thing is your Secret Garden. You're going to have to have a fully built up Secret Garden. Um, the build for it, I will drop over the next few days. It will just be an updated build that I did. Um, loosely, it looks something like this. Okay. Uh, but more or less, this is a weapon that will help you out quite a bit. So make sure to have that. Why is the Secret Garden important? It's not so much for its damage. So the build is not as important as this. The unique ability of the Secret Garden. What the unique ability does is that there's this ability called Pest Control. Whenever you use a tech skill, it'll grant you the unique ability Pest Control at a 50% chance. Pest Control lasts for 10 seconds and you can have up to 3 stacks of it. All right. Each stack increases your skill power by 16%. Not skill power modifier, skill power and firearm attack too. But the main thing is skill power. Being able to buff yourself up by roughly 48% with 3 stacks is insane. There's also a base of 5%, but I, I usually don't count that because it's really irrelevant. Um, that being said, this thing is awesome. So there's no reason not to have it. Also, Kyle has dimension skills. This gun was literally built for Kyle. Um, there's a 39% chance that whenever you use a dimension skill, you just get 10% magnetic force for no reason. So feel free to use it. All right. Secret Garden is your best bet, and you will probably see me using this gun in most of the fights. Okay. Enduring Legacy is the usual stuff that you would have seen before. This is the secret to Kyle. Secret Garden. All right. <clears throat> I'll demonstrate the technique in a little while. Now. For the modules, this is what I'm using for my bombing run. I called it Eagle 1, right up there. Going from left to right, um, Superconductive Bombing is your Transcendent mod, okay? You're going to need that to actually bomb your enemies. You don't have that, you're not going to be bombing anybody, all right? So take note of that. Midair Maneuvering uh, is your sub-attack. And of course, please make sure that you have catalyzed this slot. By catalyzing this slot, you go from 10 to plus 15, which is very important to getting your maximum module capacity. Next. Overwhelming shield, increase HP, increase shield, stim accelerant gives you the best bang for your buck. Okay? You can test out the combinations of stuff, but this, with a HP build, gives you the most amount of shields. These four are your survival. Do not skimp. Alright? More shields is good because the more shields that you have, the more magnetic force you can build up, which means you can maintain your bombing state for longer. Alright? And for the headbutt build, which is a completely separate matter... You having more shields means more magnetic force, which means more bonus damage. For the bombing run, it's not as important because basically for the bombing run, it's just the more magnetic force you use, the longer you can bomb for. That's it. It's based on duration and the amount of magnetic force you have. Cool? Cool. Okay. Now, power increase is important because you're going to pair it with non-attribute amplification. Why power increase and non-attribute amplification? Because having these two separate modifiers, skill power and non-attribute skill power, creates two different multipliers here. Base skill power boost and non-attribute skill power boost. Tech skill power boost is from the reactor, so you want to have at least three multipliers, all right? This is why this is crucial. The more multipliers you have, the better, okay? All right, so that is quite important, and this is how you will structure the build. Now, following on from that, okay, what you need is skill extension and skill expansion as your utility. The bombs have a base radius of only 3 meters. So with skill expansion, you can increase that from 3 meters to 5.8 meters, which is more than enough to properly bomb your targets. Some people say they don't need this. Like, Track is so experienced with this that he doesn't need it. I do, because I am very bad at aiming the bombs. Okay? So not having the bombs of the appropriate size will probably hamper your bombing. Adjust according to what you see fit. Skill extension extends the duration of this. I tried between this and Dangerous Ambush. I still prefer skill extension because it allows me to bomb for longer. All right. If you want, you can insert Dangerous Ambush here. All right. I catalyzed this slot multiple times just to fit it all in and to figure it out. And then, of course, Nimble Fingers and MP Conversion are for cooldowns. This will bring your bombing down to 22 seconds, and that's more than enough for most fights. Okay. Um, 
The only other thing that I'll mention is that some people use the uh, focus on non-attribute instead of power increase. This will drastically, this will lower your cooldown from this one to about 19 seconds, but you're taking a big hit to your damage. So you probably don't want to do that. Now with this full build, all right, with this Ego 1 build, um, and if you guys want the mobbing build, I will happily show it to you, but this is the anti-colossi build. With this full build, what you need to understand is this. How you will build up your magnetic power is by charging three times at the start. And then if you hold your second skill, you see your magnetic power just going up. It consumes your shields, but increases your magnetic force, right? You press your third skill to recover your power. All this with secret garden in hand. And you can see the pest control buff slowly going up. Just like that, you will basically... Now, if you're unlucky with the pest control, it'll fade before you bomb the bosses. But just like that, you've got maxed out magnetic force. All right. What you also need to understand and why I'm doing it in this training room is with maxed out magnetic force, all right, you need to know how long you can fly for. Watch how long you can fly for while bombing. All right. Once you get slightly past the halfway mark, yeah, about 75% of your magnetic force will be consumed and then your bombing run ends. You need to hit the target. You need to fly down and hit the target before your bombing run ends. So be aware of that. All right. This is because the skill has extra damage. With all right, the strength, bomb damage I is separate from the final me. hit. If you look Even there, the when Kyle me. actually hits the enemy, the collision has a separate skill modifier of 1,800. The bombs themselves have a skill power modifier of 835 each. All right, so that is the difference. And um, that is what you have to take into account when you're using this build. You're also immune to knockdown and knockback, so you don't have to worry about that, but don't collide with anything, okay? So that basically explains the Kyle build, all right? You now understand the modules. You now understand how he works. Let me actually show you how he works in combat. I'm going to get out of this lab right now. I'm going to just go do gluttony with randoms, and I'll show you that, all right? Here we go. Let's get ready. Okay, what up, ladies and gents? We're back in Albion, about to do a public gluttony match. All right, there you go. Public intercept. No hanky panky. All right. I'm queuing exact same Kyle build that I had before. All right. Everything that I had before. I'm showing you the exact same stuff. Haven't changed anything. I know there's a video cut, but it's just that I didn't want to show you, show the loading back at Albion. So I did the video cut there. Same build. Now you're going to see it in total random combat. Here we go. Here we go. I like to showcase these kinds of things with uh, total random combat because look, it might look cool to blow something up in a coordinated team, but that's not how most people are. You can't just get four friends together and showcase that as if it's a real result. Now, as soon as the match starts, what I do is this. Okay. Uh, apparently, I've got two Valbies and a Glay for this gluttony fight. Okay, cool. The best part about this Kyle build is that you can use it anywhere. Now, unfortunately, we were unlucky with the pest controls. I didn't get a single one to trigger. Oh, I got one to trigger. Okay, that's nice. Now, you want to grapple up and then start flying, all right? You want to try and aim where the boss is, fly around as much as you can. Keep an eye on your magnetic force timer, all right? And there you go. Once it ends, off you go, back to the ground. Okay, we seem to be doing pretty well here. Damn, they got on this boss real early. So keep shooting and building up your magnetic force. So use the charges while your thing is on downtime. Okay, as soon as you get the chance, you might actually be able to finish this. Okay, darn, I hit it. Darn, it just needed one little bit. Ah. If he hadn't stretched up and collided, that would have been fine. I got you. I got you. You're okay. Damn, we almost one phase that. That was pretty cool. That's why I love Kyle. He is so good at what he does. Okay, that one popped a bit early, but that's alright. Just gotta wait for a nice purple opportunity. But nothing compares to pursuing all these bossing kills. Okay, pop them purple pills. 
Oh, no. Okay, there we go. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot, shoot, shoot. There we go. All right, gluttony done. That uh, was not much of a demonstration, was it? Sorry about that. I guess I should go demonstrate against Deathstalker. I wasn't expecting the team to be this good. Um, still, my damage was not all that high. Only about 29 million. Because um, the Valby and the... Gl I'm, I'm pretty sure the Glay especially. They were all contributing plenty with their guns. So yeah, I didn't get to do as much damage as I wanted. But I'll include a Deathstalker fight as well. So that'll help to round out the video. Maybe you know show you guys a bit more perspective on Kyle. Okay, death soccer fight time with total randoms once again going into the matchmaking right now um, as before Okay, same build same build Nothing different. No hanky-panky going on. All right. Everything's the same. All right all the same All the same stuff Okay, no differences in this build. I'm not trying to showcase something different I haven't you know like done something shady with the modules. You're gonna see the exact same stuff. Here we go. I like to always prove that these videos are very real, but there because you know there's gonna be a video cut. I'm not gonna show you the whole loading time while we wait for this match, but I hope you'll enjoy it once we get to the Deathstalker. Okay, here we go. We're now in Deathstalker. Opening is always the same. Here comes a big one. You don't have to keep it on all the way, but what you probably want to do is something like this. Alright. One, two, and three. Okay, got lucky with one pest control. Go up as high as possible. Know where the target is. Now, you might have to duck and weave over obstacles a little bit, but to the best of your abilities, try and bomb close to the target and then crash into it near the end. Alright? That's what you do. Now, while you're backing up, while you're backing up, as long as you've got three stacks of this, you just want to charge randomly. Not only does it increase your defenses, but it also gives you magnetic force. This is important. And the pest control buffs, if you get it, that's a lot of extra damage. So you kind of want that. All right. Use your, uh, use your third skill as often as possible because that'll help you pretty much restore your shields. So there's no reason not to have that. I would go bombing, but I know that it's going to phase really soon, so I'm just going to shoot my secret garden and chill. Okay, good. Now we are in Chili Manjaro mode. Time to get to the next phase. I try to maintain my stacks as much as I possibly can. Sometimes you get unlucky. So if I get unlucky, I usually just relax until the time. I build up my, like, uh, stacks a bit. Alright. And I go all in at once. Unfortunately, did not get a single pest control there, but that's alright. I need to know where the Death Stalker is, but basically, once I know their position, I'll just start bombing around. Or as I like to say, pigeon bombing. Unfortunately, we had to hit it there. There you go. Now he gets three free hits from me. Shoot him as much as he possibly can while he's down. Now, because he went down early, one thing which you're going to get a chance to do is pretty much... Okay, I stacked up three times pest control. Flying high. All right. Going on the bombing run. I'll usually try and aim wherever they're moving. I'll follow them. Oh, messed up the uh, crash, but that's okay. I didn't get to do as much as I wanted there. Sometimes, unfortunately, the enemy will move, so you got no choice. You just have to kind of accept it.
But if the enemy is moving around, what you can do is, just like I'm doing right now, once again, take advantage of it. Just go bomb them. You know, while they're up in the air. Okay, unfortunately that one ended early because of the position of Deathstalker. That's okay. That means I get some extra free shooting time. Make sure to always maintain your shields with your third skill. Don't hesitate. Because, uh, oh dear. Actually ran out of secret garden ammo. Gonna have to shoot for a while. Bit of a shame, but this will do. Change back to your secret garden before you go off and bomb. Alright. It's quite crucial because if you don't do that, you'll have a bad time. Darn, it moved too much. That's a shame. Unfortunately, if the enemy moves too much, uh, you won't get much of a chance to bomb them fully. So Deathstalker moves very fast, as you can see. So unlike the other, unlike the other um, enemies in the game, Deathstalker is one of those that will be quite annoying. Why hasn't it phased yet? It's a strange. And why aren't these guys shooting? I don't know. I'll just hit it until it phases. Okay, finally phased. Like, are these guys just standing there and not shooting? That's weird. Okay, that is the weirdest thing that I've ever seen, but... Cool. Anyway. I'm extremely confused, because if it was me, I would have blasted it with every bit of ammo that I ever had. Okay. go all right that was fun took a while but it was fun a little awkward that they weren't shooting it as much as i thought they would be but that's fine i guess he is what it is let's see how much damage i actually did it moved a lot so uh, 67 mil okay i'm satisfied with that not quite as much as my Haley can do but all things considered i'm satisfied okay I hope that that was a good showcase of Kyle's build. Alright, thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you guys will continue to enjoy my content. Alright, thank you to all of our top supporters for October, our top channel members. Y'all know who you are. Alright, thank you so much. I'll see you guys on the next one. Enjoy the Kyle build!